Hello. For those who are very perceptive about the uh, dating and videos on YouTube, you may have noticed that there has been a surge of Seiko TV uh, watches on a certain web page, auction web page, and this is what I had for my share. So I was looking for something uh, that I can repair and for a reasonable amount of price. This is this came to my way. So, uh, as you have noticed, this is a TV FM stereo receiver from Seiko for the Seiko TV watch. The uh, model number is TR02-1. You can see it here. So, the seller was uh, mentioning that there has been some issues with the audio and uh, since there is no analog signal anymore, you cannot test the um, video capabilities. But there are some um, signs that uh, this was partially working. Uh, one of them was this corrosion here. This is uh, typical of aluminum corrosion uh, that you would see uh, from a battery leak. And there were some other mentions of it um, in the advertisement, so that didn't scare me off because the um, item is like a unicorn, it's uh, not rarely seen on eBay and when you see it, it's like uh, costing arm and a leg and this time three or four or even five of them appeared all at once and yeah, uh, I thought this could be the moment. I already took it uh, out of the case because um, there is nothing special. There is only uh, two things that you have to uh, pay attention to. One is the dial knob. Uh, there is a pin that is holding it in place. Um, this thing moves upwards and it exposes the pin when you move it out. You can take it uh, off easily. The other uh, part is there are some hidden screws here and there. Uh, nothing that an attentive person wouldn't find and uh, take care of them easily. Um, so, after removing that, uh, I wanted to see the extent of the damage and I started investigating uh, the corrosion starting from the battery department and I realized immediately that we are dealing with two different corrosions different type of corrosion. So one is uh, a battery leak corrosion that you would see like this. So uh, there is a uh, clear discoloration and uh, sorry about that uh, on the metal. So this is a typical uh, battery leak uh, issue and you would expect uh, the neighborhood thing parts will uh, get the um, corrosion as well so as you would see uh, there are some marks of corrosion this is uh, after I gently clean this part uh, but you can see uh, the green uh, bluish um, things that are uh, still there also the legs of some components and uh, this pot is showing uh, some signs of corrosion also uh, there at the soldering points and uh, the legs of these transistors show it and this is what uh, the um, the seller mentioned that there was some corrosion on the battery uh, sorry the uh, power connector so this uh, I call it the uh, first type of corrosion that we are observing the second one is uh, due to the age some electrolytic capacitors start to leak and when they leak uh, they have their own corrosive uh, signature let's say so for example if we look at uh, this capacitor here and we find it on the opposite side um, if you pay attention to these two solder points here those are the legs of that capacitor so you see that, uh, for example, these are nice and shiny connectors uh, or solder locations and these are a little bit matte. So uh, many YouTubers who are fixing stuff 
uh, mentioned these um, as a corrosion that is typical to the capacitive leakage, capacitor leakage. So um, the difficulty with these things are the soldering and desoldering because uh, for one reason or another uh, these um, resist uh, being desoldered because uh, you cannot transfer heat or you cannot melt this down with uh, the soldering station and it becomes a problem to um, desolder and lift the component uh, from the PCB. I tried already uh, two capacitors that were located here and I tried to desolder them and it was already a challenge because this as you see the PCB is not your standard PCB thickness but it, it is thinner and it took me 10-15 minutes to slowly work my way and lift these from the board with and keeping the traces intact uh, so I'm assuming that the rest will be as difficult because some of them are really at locations which are difficult to uh, access and these two PCBs are hold together via this wire uh, that are here and there uh, maybe it needs to be desoldered because uh, this um, PC uh, main board can be uh, or the water board can be hiding some other capacitors that are leaked uh, at the center because it is very difficult to observe the center from these uh, upright ICs and here the view is blocked by the I think what are called the uh, RF modulator and here uh, also the view is blocked uh, because of this wire between the two boards um, when I uh, operated this with the battery at the first time uh, I realized that the uh, volume knob uh, was um, not conducting properly so I think there's some sort of corrosion there that needs to be attended uh, this is the connector uh, that uh, goes to the uh, special plug which uh, connects this uh, receiver to the watch so yeah uh, I'm going to start uh, addressing the capacitors and uh, I will work my way and see after the replacement if there is um, there are still problems or not uh, the only thing that I wanted to show you is um, the condition of these two capacitors that I picked up from uh, these two locations these are 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors and I'm going to show you the situation with this uh, capacitor tester so this is not a tester that will tell us uh, at uh, the rated voltage uh, if the capacitor is leaky or not it's going to measure the um, ESR value which is uh, which can be directly linked to the uh, the performance of the capacitor or the um, working parameters of the capacitor so let's check this 100 microfarad so it's not 100 microfarad anymore it's 75 uh, microfarad and with an internal resistance of 10 ohms which is already I think out of spec for this capacitor and let's check this one it's going to check automatically now and this is even half the capacitance and even higher uh, internal resistance so the problem with uh, this board is you cannot just uh, go out and start ordering com components because uh, now we have to we have another dimension of complexity that uh, what we have to buy uh, has to live in this gap so the capacitor has to be in a, s a specific package and in a specific dimension um, that should fit here also as well for example uh, the capacitor here it should not only match the correct value uh, but it should also match the dimension here it cannot be higher otherwise things starts to stick out and 
this won't close properly as well as uh, these capacitors here which also show some degradation from the looks of their solder locations so I will start ordering parts and when they arrive I will keep uh, keeping you in the loop so thanks for watching and see you in the next episode then